Citadel to talk about how Ken Griffin is readying his assets and planning his escape for when Citadel comes tumbling down. I also want to talk about how there's currently a massive run of investor withdrawals on Credit Suisse and many other major banks and hedge funds just like Citadel. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So Wall Street Silver tweeted saying Sam Bankman Freed, his parents and senior executives of the failed cryptocurrency exchange bought at least 19 properties worth $121 million in the Bahamas over the last two years. And he said, I wonder if his parents asked any questions as to why Sam was parking real estate and his own assets in their names. This article obviously goes on to talk about and depict the properties that Sam Bankman Freed purchased, not in his own name, but in his parents' name and other executives' names as well. These properties obviously totaled up to $121 million. These are properties that Sam may be able to keep during the bankruptcy process as they aren't registered to him. Now, obviously, Sam Bankman Freed isn't the only scammer spending hundreds of millions of dollars to purchase assets not in his own name. We can see here billionaire Ken Griffin's Palm Beach mansion for his mum has the neighbours fuming. It says that hedge fund billionaire Ken Griffin plans to build an eight acre estate in Palm Beach for his mother in his mother's name. Ken recently won approval for a 44,000 square foot mansion that once completed will be the largest estate in Palm Beach. But the news isn't sitting well with Griffin's uber rich neighbours who were already upset that the hedge fund mogul had spent $450 million buying up several parcels of land in order to lay the groundwork for construction of the home. The compound plan for 60 Blossom Way will be home to Catherine Griffin, Ken Griffin's mother. You can see from the plans this property is absolutely massive. It's a multi-bedroom property that occupies six separate plots, obviously way more than what's needed for Ken Griffin's mum. He's therefore clearly trying to hide $450 million into his mother's name and not his own name. And in all fact, Ken Griffin actually has quite a name for himself of hiding money in overseas entities and in other people's names. Wall Street Apes tweeted saying, never forget. Now you may have seen this video of Trump talking about Ken Griffin, but if not, I'll play it back for you. Ken Griffin, Citadel, what a guy he is. Where are you, Ken? Where the hell is he? He's trying to hide some of his money. Look, he doesn't want to stand up. Where the hell is Ken? See, Steve, you'll stand and he's very quiet about it. He's in here someplace, he just doesn't want to stand. So clearly Ken Griffin has quite a name for himself amongst other billionaires of trying to hide his own money. One can only imagine why. But Ken Griffin isn't just hiding property in his mum's name. He's also hiding billions of dollars in overseas entities in the Cayman Islands. Now you may say, Tom, this is completely different. Sam Bankman Freed was hiding money in the Bahamas, a very sketchy place. Surely the Cayman Islands is completely secure and there's never any money ever hidden in the Caymans. Now, obviously, I'll stop you right there because obviously the Cayman Islands is completely separated from the US and many other hedge funds also hide money in the Cayman Islands as well. And if you search the Cayman Islands register, we can see the Citadel Equity Fund Limited and a number of other Citadel entities as well, all listed here. We can see these entities span from December 2007 all the way to June of 2017. Now, this document was last updated in 2017. And therefore, Ken Griffin and Citadel may now have a bunch of additional entities on top of that. I can't remember who it was, I think it was Rizzo that did the original due diligence on all of these Cayman Island entities and it's something like 200 or 300 billion dollars that Ken Griffin is hiding overseas. Many of these entities are holding 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 billion dollars worth of cash each or worth of his securities. So not only is Ken Griffin doing the exact same thing that Sam Bankman Freed is currently doing in the Bahamas, but he's even doing it on a much larger scale. He's not just hiding $121 million worth of property, he's hiding $450 million worth of property in his mum's name and billions of dollars worth of cash in the Cayman Islands. And as Stephen Cooper tweeted, he said it's very interesting how Ken Griffin has owned Citadel for 32 years, but yet he's never sought FICC protection until now. Ken Griffin went through 2007 and 2008 without seeking that FICC protection for him going bankrupt, but he's seeking it right now in 2022. 
Now, Bleeding came in with some additional information saying, I think the FICC was established sometime in the early 2000s, but still, 20 years and he hasn't needed protection, so yeah, he's clearly in a lot of trouble. Also, just a quick one, if you haven't already, be sure to sign up to Moomoo right now using the link in the description below. You can currently get $10 absolutely for free and 15 free shares on top of that, worth up to $2,000 each. Moomoo is very easy to use and it's one of the only trading platforms that isn't affiliated with the main mainstream media, with Citadel, or with other large hedge funds like BlackRock. And also guys, be sure to join the free Discord linked in the description below. We've got 1348 indicators and we talk about AMC and share due diligence all day long. Now that obviously relates to the new participant in the netting system for the Government Securities Division of the FICC for Citadel Securities. Now I don't necessarily know if this is Citadel and Ken Griffin asking for specific protection from the FICC, they're just becoming a member of the netting system. Now I think what this allows them to do is simply net incoming trades with outgoing trades and instead of paying two separate amounts, just allows them to pay the net amount. But I think it also makes them eligible for these SFTs, those securities financing transactions, to avoid having a fire sale of Citadel's assets. Obviously, if Citadel is becoming a member for these securities financing transactions, he must clearly be worried about his firm's survival. But that would also make sense as Credit Suisse has just forecasted a loss of up to $1.6 billion in the fourth quarter as the bank saw $88 billion in outflows during the first few weeks. $88 billion. Talk about a confidence problem. Right now, Credit Suisse are in a lot of trouble. They're facing another $1.6 billion loss and they've had $88 billion worth of withdrawals in only a few weeks. Not just 88 million, 88 billion. Not just 88 billion for the full year, but 88 billion for the first few weeks of quarter four. You can see this tweet from Alessio Urban that Credit Suisse hasn't just seen outflows in quarter four, they also saw outflows in quarter three and quarter two as well. And as tweeted by Joe, he said Credit Suisse's credit default swaps have just breached their 2008 highs and the previous highs set earlier this year as well. And as a result, Jan Jack tweeted saying the Ponzi scheme can't be saved. The printing of unlimited fear has reached crisis levels. And he said the crisis of confidence has set in, as investors are witnessing Credit Suisse and FTX implode under chronic stress of derivative debts, the system is finished. Obviously in the last few weeks we've seen Credit Suisse collapsing and FTX collapsing as well. Now that's going to add additional stress onto other hedge funds and other major banks and Citadel as well. Citadel obviously saw a massive uptick in withdrawals earlier this year and that's why they had to limit and actually halt withdrawals as well. And it wouldn't surprise me if even more investors into Citadel have been withdrawing their cash, causing Citadel to struggle even more. He said Credit Suisse clients pulled as much as 84 billion Swiss francs or $88 billion of their money from the bank during the first few weeks of the quarter. He said the Zurich-based bank warned on Wednesday that it will face a loss of up to $1.6 billion for the final three months of the year. And they've said that's potentially the worst exodus of cash and client funds since the financial crisis. Crazily, it says outflows from international wealth management clients were most severe, amounting to 10% of assets under management in the period in only the first two weeks of October. They've said these outflows have reduced from the elevated levels in the first two weeks of October, although they have not yet reversed. It's crazy to see such a run on client withdrawals in Credit Suisse, but it's obviously been amplified due to the recent failures over the last few weeks in FTX. But it's not just going to be Credit Suisse that's feeling this pinch, as it's not just reduced confidence in Credit Suisse specifically, it's reduced confidence in practically everything. Therefore, we're going to see other major banks feeling this same reduced confidence and the same withdrawals, and other hedge funds like Citadel as a prime example. And that is ultimately why Ken Griffin is readying his assets in his mum's name and in the Cayman Islands, and is planning his escape. It wouldn't surprise me when Citadel blows up if Ken Griffin tries to get on his plane and fly directly to the Caymans or to a country that doesn't extradite to the US. I guess we'll just have to see what happens over the next few weeks and the next few months as more and more hedge funds end up going down. And I guess we'll just have to continue tracking the funds in the Cayman Islands Citadel entities. And finally for today, Deutsche Bank is warning default rates on US leverage loans will hit a near record high of 11.3% as late as 2024. 
This means that many of those riskier companies that aren't generating profit at the moment are in a lot of trouble and many of them will default. Many of these growth stocks that have fallen by over 80% this year, some 90% and even higher, are likely still to fall further and could end up going bankrupt. And Cointelegraph said, do you still believe we don't have trouble in paradise? We're in for a bumpy ride. Many of these companies will end up failing and many of those hedge funds that are invested into these companies will end up failing alongside and margin calls and liquidations will happen. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.